what's going on guys welcome back to another video it is alex signs 23 year old real estate entrepreneur uh back with another video uh it is january 7th 2020 and i want to wish everybody that is watching this a happy new year's let's make this the most abundant happiest joyful loving year that we've ever had uh i'm excited i'm excited and uh this video is about who is alex signs okay uh well who, let's let's say this who is alex signs now um alex signs is a 23 year old real estate entrepreneur that has uh more than 15 plus businesses or is partnered in at least 15 plus businesses and has a life that he only imagined right i drive my dream car i live at a penthouse i travel when i want i go to sporting events and concerts when i want i have financial freedom i don't work for anybody i have my own business i support my mother and my siblings and i you know fix houses and i wholesale houses and i you know have other companies and have a solar company and so much right that is who I am now, right? That 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 is what I do. That is my identity. I am an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur, at the age of 23. But where did it start? You know, it's something that a lot of people uh, ask me. You know, they want to know my life story uh, because it wasn't always sunshines, sunshine and rainbows, right? It wasn't always perfect. It wasn't. And I feel like my life right now is perfect, right? Can it improve? Can I improve physically? Yes. Can I improve in the business side? Yes. But you know what? My outlook on life right now is perfect. Life is perfect. I need nothing. I, I strive for nothing. I am nothing, right? I love my life. I love who I serve, Jesus Christ. I love who I uh, work with. I love who I am. I love who I'm becoming. And I just love everything, right? But it didn't start that way. And I'm sure right now, if you're watching this, maybe you personally, you, you could love your life and you could hate it. You know, you could hate the situation that you're in. You know, you could be almost evicted. You could uh, want to, um, you know, possibly end your life. And that is something serious. There's something that I had to deal with. A bunch of depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts is a real thing. And I'm here to tell you, you can overcome it um, because I did I did and obviously a lot of other people did but there is hope and I hope my story inspires you and hits you directly where it matters to be able to change your life and completely change the way you feel about yourself and the way that you feel about others because for me I've experienced a roller coaster and I um you know I couldn't be more hap happy and grateful for where I am today but it wasn't because you know, I'm the luckiest man alive. It was because of the situations that I had to go through and had to overcome that made me who I am today. So if you're dealing with something right now, just know that I personally, and, I'm, and I mean it, I, I love you and I care for you and your life matters. And your life matters to not only yourself, but those around you, okay? Including myself. So just want to share that message of positivity and love because I sure as heck needed it when times were dark. So Without further ado, let's get right into my story. Guys, I have no notes. Um, I was I was going to type up notes, but I did. I'm like, nope, you know what? I know my whole story because I'm the author of my own book, right? So this is off the top. If, uh, if I slow down or kind of get all over the place, just bear with me. I'm going to explain my whole life story starting now. From Phoenix, Arizona, sunny, sunshine state, you know, Grand Canyon State. And I, uh, since the first moment of consciousness at the age of three, I remember... Um, living here in Arizona and my parents came from Texas they came from uh, El Paso and then Dallas Texas right I have a bunch of family in Dallas but at the age of three came here to Phoenix um, my parents came with a car like a it was like a, a small Chevy little box car and five hundred dollars literally five hundred dollars at the time it was me uh, my mom my dad and my brother Aram and he was one year old or he was like six months old and I was like two years old the first thing we did we we shared a room with um my aunt that happened to live here and it was a, it was a, probably like a 10 by 10 room and two families two families had to live there and i remember this is like the first moment of awareness of consciousness that i remember at the age of three right so when, when uh, we got here to phoenix i remember a, a a room where two families had to share and that's where it started and it got we lived there for six months while my parents uh, my mom ended up uh, finding a job to do hair and then my dad got a construction job 
when that happened, um, they started making little money and then we upgraded. But it wasn't like an upgrade that you would think. We upgraded to a um, trailer, like a motor home. It wasn't a motor home because it didn't move. A trailer, a trailer home and at the back of a church. You know what's crazy? Look, th this situation is just, it's crazy, right? So we're living at my aunt's, two families. And we go to, uh, my dad, you know, decides to go to the park, right? And we all go to the park, me, my mom, my brother, and myself. And I remember this. I remember the park, but I don't. I ended up finding out that when we went to that park, my dad and my mom met a uh, family, and they were pastors. Those pastors invited my parents to church, and they went. My parents were, you know, they grew up in the church, um, you know, Christian, and th they went to the church. At the church, my mom, uh, she was she was a licensed cosmetologist. She did hair. She found somebody there that owned a salon got a job there my dad um, talked to a guy that had a, a construction team he got a construction job there because because of networking at the church right so that's what started their journey here in phoenix as far as making money made money we upgraded to the trailer um, home at the back of the church that the pastor owned right so then we we had we lived in a trailer home me and my brother my parents and we paid they paid not we i don't have any money i was three years old but they paid two hundred dollars uh a month for that trailer home and it was like it was disgusting at night there was rats there was rats i remember my dad would put like cheese in the bags and then freaking um throw them out <laughs> but there was it was disgusting right it was disgusting but we lived there for a year by the time i was five my parents saved up enough saved up enough money and at this time like construction jobs were paying like seven dollars an hour like i remember i asked my parents my mom was making i don't know uh, eight hundred dollars a month Right. So but the groceries and this and that, like it just didn't add up. Right. But eventually they made enough money to get their first apartment. Uh, we got a first our first apartment uh, on 16th Street in Camelback, which is here in East Phoenix. Um, for those that are familiar, actually, 16th Street Indian School. We, we live there, uh, $500 apartment, live there, two bedrooms. We live there for a year and a half. Uh, this was um, until 2001. I was born in 1996. 2001, we lived in an apartment. And then we lived there for uh, two years at the apartment, went to um, elementary school, or uh, yeah, kindergarten, first grade while I lived there. Um, by second grade, by first, second grade, uh, my parents, um, through like a government assisted program, they ended up buying their first home. And this first home was uh, in West Phoenix here in Arizona. And we got our first home. So like to me, it was a three bedroom, 1300 square foot home. And to me, that was like a mansion. It was a mansion because I clearly remember the sharing the room with my, my aunt and their family, uh, going to the trailer uh, home behind the church with the rats in it every night, going to the apartment, which was in the hood. <laughs> I remember uh, there's a bunch of bad stuff that happened there. Um, and then moving to a house. And this house was on uh, 83rd and Thomas, for those that are familiar. And that house was just amazing you know I, I that's where the childhood journey started you know from from like age six to uh 12 i, I lived there i lived there uh, i met amazing friends some that i still uh talk to today some you know that i still um you know that work with me it was perfect you know we we went on trips together we had christmas together thanksgiving things started to better my dad ended up going to like 20 25 dollars an hour so like things were like anything that i wanted like and i didn't want much as a kid maybe like playstation or at the time it was um yeah ps1 ps2 like you know anything that i wanted a skateboard i would get it so like i this was like 2001 to 2004 or 5 it, economy was just going up and up and up and up right and in 2005, 2006, my parents uh, saved up, um, I believe at the time it was like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And then they put that as a down payment on a huge house. And this house was three, 4,000 square feet, five bedroom house with a pool, backyard. I mean, I have, uh, you'll see some pictures here. Um, but it was, it was a crazy big house. So here we go from a three bedroom, you know, 13, 1400 square foot house in West Phoenix and now we upgrade 2005, 2006 to a half a million dollar house. Oh, hi. This is like one of our bedrooms. We have two, actually. But this is one. Okay, both of that backyard. And you wouldn't believe, like, what happened, right? Like, it, like my life completely changed. First of all, I was the only Latino kid in an all-white school, which I thought was pretty cool pretty cool i mean I, I i definitely felt like an alien there but um 
I was like the only minority there. So this was in Surprise, Arizona at the time. And life uh, seemed to get better and better, right? But as you guys know, in 2007, um, the economy crashed. And that's when I started to really um, see things firsthand. Initially had low interest rates, but after a few years, the interest rates jumped. These loans required less verification, like whether borrowers had jobs. As long as home prices were rising, borrowers who had difficulty repaying loans could sell their houses at a profit and pay off the loan. But when home prices fell, homeowners with financial problems lost their homes to foreclosures. Banks and other lending institutions lost revenue. The impact was magnified by mortgage-backed securities. I started to see um, my parents fighting about money, my parents stressed out uh, over bills, my parents missing payments, people coming knocking on our door, telling, you know, requesting for payments. Started seeing all this stuff and throughout, you know, my parents arguing about money, it just brought a lot of friction and scarcity and fear into um, not only me, but my siblings as well. So we all felt, you know, kind of just grunt like pretty much just we were just super affected by the situation right and eventually um 2008 came we lost uh that house to foreclosure uh we ended up moving back um for and i remember it, things were so bad i remember I'll, I'll share one story like um when i was like 12 13 we went to target and uh there was like a little i, I remember uh <laughs> there was a it was a psp right but they had these little movies like these little movies for this game thing right and it was ghost rider by nicholas cage i remember i remember specifically i asked my dad if i if they can buy me it it was like 15 dollars 10 15 12 15 dollars some uh, somewhere around there and they said no we don't have money and i started throwing a tantrum I'm like, hey, like, buy me this. It's only ten dollars, only. But they really didn't have the money. But I didn't know that at the time. So guess what I did? I put it in my pocket, and I stole it. And I'm as I'm walking out, the security grabs me and says, "Hey, what's in your pocket?" There was cameras. Obviously, I didn't know. I was 12 years old. I remember that moment when I went back to the uh, the security room, and they were like, you know, uh, putting my name in the system. I was getting banned from all the targets. And I remember looking at my parents uh, in their in their in their eyes, so disappointed and so hurt with me. And I remember like the guilt and shame that I felt because that's how bad times were. You know, they I, they couldn't afford a, a fifteen dollar movie. And looking back, I ended up you know uh, be, becoming more aware of it. But during that time, it was, it was it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. That was a moment where I was like, damn, like we are we're broke. You know, we're broke. We don't have money, extra money to buy a $15 movie. Like that was out of the picture coming from getting everything, you know. And to me, everything was like getting, you know, whatever I wanted in the ice cream man or getting the skateboard that I wanted or getting the video game that I wanted. At the time, it was just what kids wanted, right? Um, so we got foreclosed on that house and uh, we were, were moving back to our, our uh, first house, our three-bedroom house. My dad still owned it, had horrible tenants. They trashed the place. So we moved back there. My dad fixes it and we live there. And then uh, while my dad is negotiating with the bank to keep the house, he prolongs the negotiation. So we live there for a year, a year and a half for free. Eventually it gets foreclosed on and now uh, we have nothing. We go to uh, rent a house by the area, uh, rent a two-story home right there by 83rd and, and Thomas, West Phoenix, for those that don't know. We live there for a few months. That house gets foreclosed. Like what the heck? So that house gets foreclosed. You know, the what the, the people were, you know, the owners were doing, they were renting the house while they're getting foreclosed on so they can make a little bit of money because they know they're going to lose it. So we got foreclosed on. We had to move to the next house. And guess what happened? That house gets foreclosed. I kid you not, this happened three times. We moved into the house, gets foreclosed, move into the house, gets foreclosed. Now we're like, you know, I remember this. We had a big pool table, and I remember moving that pool table like freaking seven times in like a two-year period. Now I, I don't like pool tables. <laughs> fun, yeah, fun fact. <laughs> and um, what this led to was my parents wanted something that was theirs, right? And uh, at the time, I remember my, we we didn't have we didn't have money, but all we had was a a Yukon. It was worth like 
ten, twelve thousand dollars. My mom started searching for trailer parks or trailer homes to buy in trailer parks, and my mom finds a, a great deal. She finds a great deal, you know, a four or five thousand dollar trailer home, uh, and we bought it uh, for five thousand. So we ended up selling the Yukon to buy it. And now we had uh, some money left over. That money was used to fix it up, right? But what was happening in my mind was, how am I going to go from a half a million dollar home to a trailer park? I did not want any part of it. I remember the resentment that I had towards my parents. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to live there. I'm too good for that. I don't belong there. That's not for me. I'm going to move to Dallas with my aunt. You guys go there right? That that was a response that I had. I was very immature. Now I feel really bad about it. But during that time, it was just like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. I, I lived at a half a million dollar house. I could not regress. I could not retract on where I thought, you know, we should be. But I had to live there. You know, we moved there during a summer in 2010. And, and uh, it was super hot. And all summer, we're fixing up the house and, and painting. And, and uh, my dad's, a, you know, a contract or a contractor at the time. So he knows how to do it. And I'm helping him. And we're helping him. And we make it actually look really nice. And that's where I lived all of high school. So the, uh, 2010, I was 13, 14 years old. I was going into my freshman year in high school. Uh, throughout the previous years, I was, pl- I was playing, uh, you know, Pop Warner football. Ended up becoming pretty good. So I went to a very good high school called Westview High School in Phoenix, which had a really good football program. That's why I went there. Lived at, at, at the trailer park starting my freshman year. I never invited any friends over. Um, I never, I never told anybody where I lived. Uh, because I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I was I was hurt. Well, I was hurt, but I was more ashamed. You know, like my ego was too big. I, I couldn't let any everybody know. Like, hey, Alex signs the the cool freshman lives at a trailer park. You know, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Lived at the trailer park. Started uh, high school. Um, I was always very sharp when it come when it came to my academics. Throughout high school, I uh, I maintained a 4.0 GPA. I ended up graduating with a 4.2. Uh, had like I think like a one B or two Bs, and they were in adva- advanced classes, so they were they still counted as 4.0s. That's that's where I lived, and that I went to Westview High School. I played football, ended up becoming a football captain. Played varsity from my sophomore year to my senior year, um, and and. School-wise, everything was was cool. You know, I had good friends, had a good, um, you know, a good. It was a good environment for me. I didn't, uh, I didn't do drugs. I didn't, I didn't. Uh, did I go party with the guys? Yeah, all all the time. But I didn't. I was a pretty good kid when, it, like, really good kid, right? But at home, you know, you would think that you know, being um, back where everybody's comfortable and everybody has, you know, we're not getting kicked out or evicted. Like you would think things would get better, and they did it. They did it uh, throughout. You know, um, my freshman year to senior year, things didn't get better. You know, I was totally distracted with school and um, and football. But back at home, um, it was a complete mess. You know, my parents kept arguing. You know, my siblings kept hearing it. I kept hearing it, and things just did not turn out well. Uh, eventually, it led to my parents divorcing. And when that happened, I was a sophomore. A sophomore is 2011, 2012. It was one of the worst times of my life because everything that you used to know completely changes. Like everything's like stripped from you. And for me, like it hit me, it hit me really hard. Uh, at, during the moment, it, my mom moved out and my sisters moved out. So now we have separated families. I'm living with my dad and my brother. But I was still so distracted by school that it didn't really hit me like emotionally, which uh, to me, I think it was a good thing that I was kind of neglecting it. But in, in, a, in a bad way, it, it caught up to me. And that's how it caught up to me. Uh, it was my senior year, uh, second semester. I got out early out of school and I, um, I would get home like 1130. And when I got home... 11:30 a.m. every single day there was nobody there there was nobody there there was no f- food cooked like i had experienced from you know all my childhood there was no uh union ship you know everybody's all over the place um there's no more thanksgivings no more christmases no nothing and that's when it really hit me that was like the darkest time of my life and i thought there was no way out of it but there was and i'm going to explain how everything unfolded. Uh, growing up, uh, my dad was a contractor. I worked a lot of construction with him. Uh, I learned a lot about construction early on. 
uh, which was a huge benefit for me now because I'm in real estate. Uh, I used to, you know, sweep, you know, uh, f projects. My dad used to help build apartment complexes. I was there firsthand, and it, it actually benefited me well. Worked that. Uh, my mom owned a salon um, for a little bit, maybe like two, three years. Um, saw how she managed, so I got firsthand experience on entrepreneurship. And my parents were entrepreneurs in their own way. My dad uh, built his own construction company. My mom had her own salon. So I saw how it was built, but they never really scaled it. They never really built it because um, they just didn't know how. Uh, but I had a lot of experience with construction. Um, not a lot, but I, you know, I, I did see and I did work. Uh, but first job was at Sprouts. And for those that don't know what Sprouts is, Sprouts is a um, food marketplace. My job was a uh, to become a manager. No, I'm just kidding. My job, my first job was pushing carts. And it was a part-time job during high school. At 16, I got the job. And I remember I walked in. How I got the job, I just walked in with a uh, a, a tank top and some basketball shorts. And I said, hey, you guys hiring? <laughs> Literally, so if you have no job, just walk into any place with a tank top and basketball shorts and you'll get a job. <laughs> I'm kidding. I got I got my first job pushing carts, $7 and like 25 cents an hour, which I thought was a big deal. And, and I mean, I'm working uh, part-time on the weekends and, and uh, evenings uh, during high school. I'm managing football, my, my school, my advanced classes, and, and job. Cool story, and this was uh, my freshman year of high school. I got my first car. And how I got my first car, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't bought by my parents. It was a uh, 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse, and I bought it by flipping Jordans. That was my first entrepreneurship thing yeah i sold candy during high school who didn't right but I, I didn't make it you know a big thing made a few bucks but my first thing to make money was flipping jordan so my mom gave me a uh, a pair of jordans for uh, my birthday and instead of wearing them which is this is i feel really bad about this now but i ended up selling that box for like 200 bucks and with those 200 dollars, i bought two pairs of jordans uh they were some sevens and they were some wolf gray fives for those i know uh, two pairs of Jordans, and then those two pairs of Jordans, I, I sold them, and then I bought like three pairs of Jordans and like um, a basketball jersey, and it kept, it, I kept flipping it, kept flipping it, kept flipping it. I got to like 25 pairs of Jordans, and then I sold uh, a little bit more than half, and I still have the other half in my in my uh, in my place. I still have a lot of those Jordans, but I sold like more than half, and then I saved up uh, about 1,200 bucks, 1,200 bucks that I that I made from flipping Jordans, and I bought my first car with that. And it was a 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Got a great deal on it. But that was my first car. So I was the only freshman at Westview with a car. That was a big thing for me. Um, and uh, I love that car. <laughs> it was, that was my first car. So I, when I got my Sprouts job, I can, you know, drive on my own. I drove to school on my own. It became started becoming very independent because... Um, when my parents divorced, I had no other choice, right? I had to, I had to find for myself. You know, everybody was so focused in their own pain and trauma that I couldn't. You know, was I hurt? Absolutely, but I had to do something about it, right? So, 16, got my first job. Um, worked there for a year and a half. My next job was a uh, at a shoe store called Robert Wayne, and I sold uh, shoes. I, I sold shoes and and I was a sales sales associate. My third job was at the state fair. This was like a seasonal job. I worked at the state fair. Uh, and that was actually pretty bad because at the time my car ended up breaking down. I, I didn't have a ride. So literally like, I don't know why I worked this job, but I worked at the safe fair and they paid me $6 an hour, 12 hours a day. And I remember I had to take the bus maybe 10 miles to the state fair. And then on the, the fair closed at 12. So there's no way I can get home in the bus. Like it, they shut off at night. So I had to buy, I had to get a taxi or an Uber or a Lyft. This, this was when I was 16. The Uber and Lyft would cost me $30, so, like, each day I would make, yeah, it was, like, 60 72 bucks. So half of my check would go on the ride back home. So that was that. That was freaking a mess. But, I, you know, I'm making a little bit of money. Actually, the rest of the money would go on food because I had to eat. So that was that. That didn't last long. So my next job was at a collection agency, and this was when I was 18, 18 years old. And I fell before the collection agency. I had uh, I was finishing high school. I graduated high school right before uh, we graduated. My buddy, Jalen White, comes up to me and he says, hey, hey, bro, um, look, look what I did. Look what I did. And uh, he shows me a picture of a house. And uh, he's like, I just flipped it. I'm like, what do you mean just flipped it? Like, how, how like, did your dad give you money? Like, and, and they're his parents are like in another uh, 
city. They're in Wisconsin. So he's like living at his girlfriend's house and like, you know, how'd you flip that house? So then uh, he has to go change the lockbox on the house. I go with him. I check out the house. I'm like, he's like, yeah, I just flipped this house. I'm like, how'd you do it? And then uh, he told me about wholesaling houses. And like, kid you not, a week later, he shows me his bank account and he has um, just under $13,000. Because I think he was overdraft when he got his $13,000 deal. But he got $13,000 and he showed me his account. And I'm like, holy crap, this is real. This is real. Like, And look, I've never been the guy to look at somebody and say, hey, I'm better than you. But I've always been the guy to say, I'm just as good as you. And I'm sure some of you can relate. And if you feel like, you know, I'm better than him. That is definitely not what you want to feel because um, that doesn't come from a good place, right? So uh, you guys are just as good as me. You guys can do it as well, right? So think that way. Uh, but he, he got his first deal and like freaking obsessed crazy guy that I am. I'm like, how'd you do it? Show me. And this was like, this was uh, in May of 2015. I graduated and I had uh, I had scholarships and I didn't want to go to college because I was so intrigued by real estate. So I let all the orientations at ASU and all these all this all these scholarships just go to waste. Well, not waste, but I, I you know let go of them because I wanted to pursue real estate. And then Jalen leaves to uh, Poland for two and a half months, three months. So he left. So my only source to learn real estate has left. So now it's like I'm in a position where, and at this time, look, I have no car. Uh, I had just, you know, graduated. I'm living at my mom's house. Um, my dad ended up uh, getting his own thing, um, his own house. But I'm living at my mom's house, and I, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, dang, like, I can't wait for my, my friend Jalen to come back and teach me real estate. I got to do it on my own. So for the first uh, three months from May to, like, August, I literally watched every single YouTube video that you can think of about real estate investing, real estate wholesaling, fix and flipping. I watched shows like Property Wars. I watched um, I watched a lot of Sean Terry. Shout out to Sean Terry. Um, I watched a lot of his podcasts. I watched uh, a lot of YouTube videos that he had. I, I literally went full just go, you know, full knowledge mode. You know, I try to soak up as much possible. And the first three months, like, um, I didn't have money. I didn't have a car, so I couldn't really do anything. Um, so what I did, I, I got credit cards and I uh, cash advanced them and I and I bought uh, banded signs. You see a picture right here, banded signs for real estate marketing. And for nine months, I tried literally everything that I learned. I tried, I learned, I tried, and nothing was working. And it got to the point where um, I, I, I quit. I quit a few times. I'm not going to lie. I quit a few times. Uh, it got It got a lot worse for me. Um, my mom, uh, ended up moving to Nevada, took my sisters and her boyfriend at the time. They, they dipped, they left. So now it's like, uh, where am I going to live? And it's not like, she didn't ask me like if I wanted to go with them. First of all, I wouldn't have gone cause all my life, my friends, my girlfriend, like everything was here. So I wasn't going to live in Nevada. Um, but they left and I had to, um, humble myself and ask one of my friends if I could live at his house. And it was actually one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done felt really bad like hey like uh, I have nowhere to live um can I live with you and he asked his dad and he said yes and uh they gave me his, their little brother's room little spider-man bed and my feet are hanging out when I sleep lived there for I want to say three to four months and during those three to four months I had to get a job and that's when I got the collection agency job because he worked my friend worked at the collection agency got that job and this was like month five six of real estate like I had quit and I remember uh, trying to do real estate. I'm putting out a bunch of bandit signs. I was like one of the major main things that I was doing. I remember getting one call at uh, at work. I, I got a call, but I couldn't answer because it's like confidential data. Like you can't answer your phone when you're on uh, people's like social securities, right? So I get this call. Uh, it was somebody. It was a homeowner trying to sell their house. They left the voicemail, you know, say, hey, I have to sell my house today. I didn't hear it until lunchtime. I called them back during lunchtime in that house. I, I called them like, hey, you know, I'm Alex. I'm a real estate investor. I, I got your missed call. Are you looking to sell a house? And he said, I just sold it 10 minutes ago. I just sold it 10 minutes ago. And I'm like, oh, man, like, you know, if you don't mind me asking, what did you sell it for? And he said like 100000 And the house worth like 180, 190. So I knew it was it could have been a, a $10,000, $20,000 deal, right? But I lost it because I was working a nine to five and I couldn't answer the phone. And that made me so furious, so furious. That was like strike one. I'm like, man, I shouldn't be working this damn call center because 
it, it just lost I just lost twenty thousand, you know, I'm already counting. Um and that made me mad. I mean, that made me hate my nine to five. And during this nine to five, like things like got really bad. Like my mom left, so I didn't really have family here. I'm living at my friend's house. I have no support. Like like nobody. Like nobody there for me. Like nobody. Like I, I really felt like I was alone. I was alone. That's when I really hit um, major depression, major anxiety. Uh, had suicidal thoughts. I'm not ashamed to to bring it up because it was true. It, it's true. Like you're in uh, you're in a dark hole, dark place, and you, and I felt like there was no way out of it. Um, and what ended up happening is, uh, this was December of 2015. I'm 18 years old. I had just turned 19, and when I turned 19, um, I had to work on my birthday. And that to me, oh my God, I hated that. That was strike two. That's like, I'm, I hate, I hate that I have to work for somebody else. I hate that I have to freaking work on my birthday. I had to work all day, literally a a nine to seven shift. By the time I got home, it's an hour away. Like it was just horrible. So uh, I turned 19, but a few days after my birthday, I got a deal under contract, a real estate deal. I got, I got, I put out banded signs, uh, the homeowner called me. I actually answered this time and I got this deal under contract for 105,000 and then I messaged a few investors that I knew on Facebook that you know through wholesaling groups and by the way if you are looking to join our wholesaling group uh, for free on Facebook just go into the description all in wholesaling and uh, join join it I, I was hitting up a few investors and I um, I ended up selling that deal for 110,000. So I got it for 105, 110,000. So I was going to make $5,000. This was mid December 2015. And then uh, on Christmas Eve, um, I had to work again. And that was like, that was the moment where I'm like, I'm done. I literally quit my job. I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have the guts to like tell him I quit and then walk out and slam everything. I, not like that. I just didn't show up. I'm, I'm done and then they fired me. So that was that. So I'm done with the collection agency. But I was very hopeful because I had a, I had a five thousand dollar deal closing January second of twenty sixteen. So I just had to wait a week to get uh, my five thousand and then yeah. So when I left that job, I, I had three four thousand dollars in credit card debt. All my expenses, all my living expenses were on the card. So I had two thousand dollars to my name. I quit. Uh, again, there was no Christmas for me, like, and, and like there was no family. My mom's in Nevada. Everybody's doing their own thing, right? So what did I do? I got a flight to Dallas, Texas, to go spend Christmas and New Year's with my grandma, and my aunts, and my cousins out there. Um, I flew out there, two thousand dollars. I I'm buying um, a bunch of gifts for everybody for Christmas. I take everybody to CC's Pizza. There's like fifteen of us, so it's like hundred. 50 170 bucks so like i'm paying that because i'm feeling really generous because i have five thousand dollars coming i i go out there i remember i went to my first uh dallas cowboys game uh literally sat like first spent three hundred dollars on a ticket sat next to like a, a marketing director of walmart next to me like it was i just like did the complete opposite of what i should Any, anyways i i finished that trip i came back to phoenix uh like after right after new year's i had uh three hundred dollars uh i went from two thousand to three hundred dollars i don't know what the heck happened flights this and that but i had 300 dollars when i came back uh that following business day it was like january 2nd or 3rd the deal was uh expected to close right oh and backtrack uh in december i got a studio with my dad and then my dad ended up leaving so now i'm stuck with rent for um for january's payment which is like 850 bucks he ended up leaving so now i'm stuck with the studio and and i told him hey like i have some money coming i'll pay rent it's all good so you know it's it's the next business day after after new year's and i get a call and i get a call from the seller uh the seller's son that was selling me the house for 105,000. i get a call and he says hey alex my dad has cancer we're not gonna sign anything and i remember just my heart dropping like what like what do you mean like everything's already in in contract like why like what and i remember like just like panicking like the five thousand dollars that i was expected to have like gone 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 and I didn't know what to do. And obviously, like, I wasn't going to strong arm the homeowner and be like, hey, you have to sign. Like, I don't care if you have cancer. Like, no, like, I just let it go. Like, hey, you know, I hope I hope he recovers. Uh, thank you. And I let it go. I let the buyer know, like, hey, we don't have a deal anymore. Like, they're not going to sign. So, like, that was gone. You know, I had it in my hand, $5,000, and it was gone. 
And you can imagine at this point how I'm feeling. I'm, you know, I'm feeling like this isn't for me. I'm done. This works for everybody but me. I hate real estate. I hate my life. And I went like for a week, like, I mean, seven to 10 days. Like it was just like mad depression, like mad, mad depression. Uh, this is when like things were really bad mentally. Um, I had, I had rent. I borrowed, uh, I borrowed literally like 600, $700 from my buddy, uh, Eric. He gave me his whole check. He gave me his whole check. Like, I don't know why he did it. He had no expenses, but he worked at Boost Mobile and he gave me his whole check and that whole check, I used it uh, for rent. And then I cash advance one of my credit cards and um, and I had a $1,000 and then I bought a, a car. I bought a, a Ford Taurus. I bought a car and it had no tags, no insurance. So I, I, I bought a car during that time because I'm like, hey, like, I'm going to have to get another job. I need a car. So I cash advance and I was like, I'll just pay it later. So I, I bought a car during right after I lost that $5,000 deal. And I hit, it was pretty bad. Like I I didn't leave the the apartment. I was applying online for jobs. I applied for McDonald's. They never hired me. I'm glad they didn't. Now I'm glad. During that time, I really needed it. Um, But I applied for a bunch of jobs during like when I lost that $5,000 deal. And I had quit. I'm like, you know, I'm done with real estate. It's not for me. It's not going to work for me. You know, entrepreneurship is for everybody else but me. And I'm not going to do it. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what happened, right? Uh, but there's, uh, you know, one day, maybe uh, 10 days later, two weeks after I lost the deal, I go to my girlfriend's uh, grandma's house. Uh, rest in peace, her grandma. I uh, loved her. I went to her. I went to her house and I went in my little shitty car and my girl uh, girlfriend invited me to eat. So I didn't have money, but she invited me to eat. I go and something kind of just told me, like, you know, I'm listening to church music. I'm trying to get, like, I've always been a man of faith. Uh, but I was really test battle-tested that time. Like, I, I was wondering, it got to a point where I was questioning my belief in God. Like, it got to a point where I was questioning uh, why this was all happening to me. Why was my, um, you know, my family broken apart? Why was, uh, why did I feel like I had nobody? Why did I feel lonely? Why Why am I in depression? Why? And I didn't know it was depression at the time. You don't know when it's, when you're in that moment. But why was, you know, why was I feeling anxious? And why was I feeling no love? Like, I was, like, questioning my faith super hard. I'm sure some of you can relate, right? And I'm, I'm trying to stay faithful. I'm listening to, you know, church music, Chris Tomlin at the time. And something, I don't know, something just kind of told me to drive around the neighborhood. And in real estate, there's a concept where it's called driving for dollars and driving for dollars is where you drive around your neighborhood and look for vacant, distressed, burned down properties, you know, super messed up properties, tall weeds, broken glass, like, you know, super distressed properties. So I did that. I drove around in my four Taurus uh, with no freaking AC, <laughs> no AC it was actually cold. Well, no, no heater. So this is January of 2016 and I'm driving around the neighborhood and I, Dang, it was it was around this time. Wow, I'm looking at the day. Today's January seventh. It was around this time. Uh, what was that four years ago? Four five four years ago. And I remember driving around the neighborhood. I've never done this in real estate. The only thing I did was door knocking and bandit signs. And I sent some uh, handwritten letters. That's all I did when it came to real estate and trying to find a real estate deal. I drove around for for dollars. I I I, I go to the first house. I it's a it's a vacant house uh, in South Phoenix. I go to the first house, I look up the owner's name, I Google it on this app called Intellius. There's no answer, right? Like straight to, straight to, uh, you know, it was just beeping. Like you get the ringing sound. It was a bad number. I go there and <clears throat> uh, no good on the first one. The second house that I did, I kid you not, the second house that I did, I look up the owner's name. It's a, it's a big house. It's all vacant. I look up the owner's name. His name is Luis Miranda. I remember very specifically. I, I look up his name on that app called Intellius to get a phone number. I get the phone number of Luis Miranda. There's like five, six numbers. I call them all. All of them don't work. None of them work. I'm like, man, like this isn't working. Like, I, like what's, what do I do? Right before I'm about to exit that app, I click on relatives. On, on that app, there's a, there's a section called relatives. And I click on relatives, and there's a lady's name. And the lady's name is completely different than uh, Miranda, his last name. I click on, those la- on the lady's name. I call that number, and a guy answers. A guy answers, and I say, hey, is Luis available? This is him. 
holy shit i got the right person right i call uh, i called them i said hey my name is alex i am a real estate investor in this area i saw your house here on tonto street i was just wondering if you'd be interested in selling it for cash and he said yeah you know yeah I, you know i would sell it oh and by the way alex uh if you look right behind you across the street brown house i own that one too it's vacant too make me an offer on both whoa make you an offer on both and he's like call me uh yeah call me tomorrow okay yeah okay sounds good you know thank you for your time i started shaking i'm in the car by myself i started shaking and i'm like i'm not waiting till tomorrow i'm not i'm gonna call him right now i call him back 10 minutes later and i'm like hey i, I saw your properties here on tonto and maricopa and i remember the streets i gave you guys an address i know him and i call him back and i say hey i'll give you fifty thousand dollars for both and he hung up on me. He freaking hung up on me. I'm like, damn, that's not how I expected it to go. Like in my mind, right? My, my little voice. I call him back. I'm like, hey, you know, I know 50000 doesn't work. Where do you need to be to sell? So I, uh, so he said, hey, I wouldn't sell for less than 100000 And I was like, how about 60000 Nope. How about 70000 Nope. How about 80000 Nope. How about 90,000? Nope. Like how does somebody go from 50,000 to 90,000? Like I I literally did that and the guy's still on the phone with me. I'm like, "Look, I really want these properties. Um, you know, how about how about 90 I think I said 95. I was like, "How about you meet me in the middle and we'll do, you know, I could do 95." And he's like, "You know what? I'll do 92,000." Um, because like I was trying like I, he liked me over the phone. So, I ended up getting these two contracts for 92 thousand so two houses for ninety two thousand uh i remember sending him a completely wrong contract like it was like a, it was a, i sent him an assignment contract uh instead of a purchase agreement like it was like some of you guys don't know what i'm talking about but pretty much i sent him the wrong document when uh in order to buy his house or get it under contract but i ended up getting the right contract uh sent it to him um, and guys, all this stuff, I didn't have, a, I didn't have a course. Like it was all free stuff that I looked on YouTube. So this was like literally just being resourceful. Uh, so I got these two houses for 92,000. Um, I'm still like, I'm, I'm very hopeful, but I'm also very like sad inside. Like, because I was still so hurt about the $5,000 deal falling through. Now I'm like, okay, like I need to sell them, you know, right? Like I got, I got them. I need to sell them for higher than 92 so i start calling uh, all the people in the area that have houses for rent i leave about uh maybe five to ten voicemails somewhere around there call a bunch of people leave voicemails and nobody answered me it was already late and the next day i'm watching like espn at my studio and this studio is like in the hood like in the hood <laughs> and i'm watching espn and i remember i get a call and uh, this guy calls me like, hey, like I had a missed call. Like, you know, what's going on? And I'm like, no, you didn't. I didn't call you because I'm so used to n never having to uh, call anybody. Right. But this guy calls me. He's like, well, I'm like, no, you didn't call me like you have the wrong number. And I'm like, yeah, you have the wrong number. He's like, all right, well, sorry about that. You know, have a good day. And I'm like, wait, wait, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm a real estate investor. I'm a realtor, real estate investor. I'm like light bulb right like whole oh crap like hey like i have two houses on 13th uh, avenue in tonto would you be interested in buying them he's like oh i live down the street let me check them out text me the addresses text him the two addresses the guy actually lives down the street uh he had houses for rent in the area he looks at the houses he says uh he looks at them literally like 30 minutes later he calls me he's like look i looked at the houses how much do you want for them? And I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> I didn't think that far ahead. And I said, the first number that came to my mind was 105,000. 105,000. He's like, I'll take them. Uh, during that moment, I'm like, damn, I, I said too low. But then during that moment, it's like my heart just like opened up. And look, I, I knew I, at that point, like it wasn't for sure. But the hope was back, right? Because literally I was stripped of the $5,000 deal. And I was in complete depression and anxiety. Like, I just, there was no purpose. Like, I feel like I didn't need, I didn't have a purpose to live. Like, but when, once he said, I'll take them, it was like, my heart just opened. And I sent him, oh, actually, he sent me an assignment contract. He helped me. I told him, hey, like, this is my first deal. Like, just help me. And he helped me. I was just being very honest with him. Like, and he ended up closing three days later. 
So it's like a, a Tuesday, and he closed on the Friday. So literally uh, two and a half weeks after I lost that five thousand dollar deal, he closed on those two properties, and I got my first real estate check. I'm gonna put a picture right here for thirteen thousand dollars, and this was the biggest breakthrough of my life at that time. Um, the way I felt was just, you know, it's one thing to see others do it, but when you do it yourself, it's just a completely different feeling. And it just, it just gave me proof of concept. Like the, it was real, it was real. And I wasn't going to stop. And I got that $13,000. I paid off, uh, m the money to, um, to my, uh, my buddy that gave me his check for rent. I, I prepaid three months of rent at that studio. I didn't go out and get another apartment. I stayed there. I stayed there. I, I and then I invested uh, like four or five thousand dollars back into the business. And what I did, I did direct mail. I sent letters to high absent, high equity absentee list in Portland, Oregon, um, and things just started to evolve. Like my hope was back, and I knew this business was real. I knew this business was real, and did was I still in? Um, in her and pain and depression. Yeah, I still was, even though I made that money. But I had, I had, I had a new light at the end of the tunnel, right? Like I had, I knew that I knew that I could change my life with it, and that's what I continued to do. Um, February of 2016, I didn't make any money, but I was working a bunch of leads. Uh, March, I made fifteen thousand uh, dollars from two deals in Portland, Oregon, and then in in April of 2016, I got I closed four or five deals, and I made my first $25,000 ever, right? So in a matter in from January to May, uh January to April, uh I made uh $53,000. And this was like me very like I moved actually instead of paying for the studio, I moved into my cousin's house that he was renting a room from from his other cousin. So I paid $300 a month for a room that I I did there and I was making 10,000, you know, $12,000 a month real in real estate. And I, I just kept investing everything back into the business. In May of 2016, I went to my first real estate event in D.C., uh, my first uh, mastermind. I invested $5,000 to go there. I met a bunch of amazing people, uh, some of them which are Carlos and Sal, for those that know, and, um, and Zadie and Christoph Becker and Ed and, like, all these people from around the country, right? Uh, if you're watching this, I love you guys. But I met a bunch of people. I learned new concepts. Uh, but it really just got me in the right direction, right? I continued to do real estate. Uh, that year, um, just to fast forward, that year was amazing. Uh, I closed 12 deals for $120,000. $120,000. And it completely changed my life. And during that year... Uh, I lived very frugal, very uh, was very cheap, uh, but I was investing everything back into the business, and that year was a year of of uh, of a lot of a breakthrough. You know, I I went from depressed to a lot better. Like you know, money uh, isn't everything, but it, it does affect. You know, it can impact you know your life in in a very positive way, and and if used the right way, of course. And that year was just amazing. But that year for me was like, you know, like I'm making all this money but I'm the only one enjoying it. I'm the only one enjoying it. Like I'm all my friends still work. My mom still has to do hair to make a living. She's like, you know, at that time she had moved back to Phoenix. Um, and my dad's still busting his, you know, but you know, working construction in the hot sun, like here in Phoenix, it gets super hot. So he's still working. Like, I'm like, this is, this isn't just about me. Like this is, you know, about others as well. So end of 2016, that was like something that I kept kind of poking at me, poking my heart, like, hey, like, make it about others. And towards the end of that year, like, um, things just aligned perfectly. Like, um, my best friend, Andy Garcia, which is now uh, the COO for OfferHome and future companies to come. But he, um, you know, quit his uh, his job at a, at a customer service um, spot and uh, he ended up coming on and cold calling for for uh, for us or me, and that was like my first hire. You know, that was my first hire. My brother ended up getting kicked out of his girlfriend's house, so then I took I had an apartment uh, by the end of 2016. He ended up moving in. His first week, he starts cold calling. He's like 16, 17. He starts cold calling, gets a ten thousand dollar deal. His first first week, uh, so like things just started going amazing, right? And then 2017 was a year of like, okay, it's not just about me. 
I got to make it about others. And the first thing I did was bring on my brother and my best friend and to start helping them grow, right? 2017 came, and with Carlos, Sal, and my buddy Jalen White, we ended up getting an office together. We ended up getting an office together. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't have an office, it is the best decision you can make because when I got an office, things exploded, okay? Aside from learning new strategies and marketing and more real estate knowledge, like, things exploded and and february of 2017 we got our first office uh shared it with carl sal and jalen jalen a month later ended up uh, moving to la so it's just me carl sal for the rest of 2017 and 2017 was an absolute blessing i'm telling you like we went from i went from 12 deals by myself to we did 52 deals in 2017 120 thousand dollars in revenue wholesaling houses no money no credit needed Eventually, you need money to generate leads, but initially, you don't need money to start because I didn't have any money, I promise you. 2017 went from 120000 to $615,000 in wholesale fees. This was year two of entrepreneurship for me. And it wasn't because of me. It was because of the team. I made it about others, right? That is a secret. Like, make it about others. I made it about others. And 2017, I began to start to impact my mother's life my my father's life um even though they're separated like i still love them even though they abandoned me i felt that way you know for their own reasons um i still i still love them so much i'm like look i'm just gonna always be here for you guys i'm gonna provide in any way that i can i started providing for you know family in mexico my, my grandma in dallas like just all over the place right? i started becoming really uh, a blessing to many people you know, and and that's what I wanted. That's that was my goal. Twenty seventeen was amazing. Uh, Twenty eighteen uh, was even better. <laughs> we uh, so many things happened. I mean, just being in the office with uh, like minded, amazing people like Carlos, Sal, Carlos, Adrian, Putney, like I mean, everybody, right? Everybody, um, my team, like. 2018 was just a year of, of abundance, right? <clears throat> 2018, I 2018, I turned 21, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, when I turned 21, I started going out a lot. I started going out a lot, and it derailed me from business, and it derailed me from my inner peace. And that's a whole another story, but I, I I went out a lot, and then uh, but 2018 was amazing. We we closed over a million dollars in wholesale fees, wholesale fees, a million and fifty thousand, well over. Yeah, it was well over 100 deals. So, well, I can, I can get you guys the exact number, but ton of deals that year, 2018, all in entrepreneurs, which I will be speaking a lot about uh, throughout this channel. All in was uh, was created um, in 2018, and it was just a year of absolute blessing. You know, things just exploded and skyrocketed. So 2018 was a year of, of growth and abundance and, and I mean, money that I've n never seen come and and things just started to sprout and and God's work was really being done and uh was I perfect throughout the process no not at all not at all there was a lot of uh trials and tribulations that I failed there was a lot that I uh, won I'll say this throughout like the the beginning of the real estate journey one thing I always did and I, this is literally a, a life secret one thing I always did was I, I tithe I, I gave um to where it was due I tithe I, I, I gave my 10% and I really believe that was one of the reasons why deals just kept coming. Deals just kept coming and coming and coming. And 2019 was um, another amazing year. I'm just lost for words at this point. You know, now we own 15 plus businesses. We have our own commercial uh, building, you know, our own headquarters. We're sitting here. That's my bookshelf right there for those wondering. I drive, you know, now in 2018, I bought my dream car at 21. I bought an Audi R8. At 21 years old, I never would have imagined. I bought a BMW X6 M, M series. Uh, 2019, uh, uh, 2018 flew my first private jet, went to Miami, got a yacht, went on a bunch of trips, bless my mom. My first flip I ever did, uh, made $48,000 on a, on a flip. I, I do wholesaling and I'm going to explain, explain throughout this channel. Uh, wholesaling is where you, uh, you know, you sell contracts, right? You're not flipping the houses. You're not painting it. But the first house I actually bought, painted, fixed, we made $48,000 and my mom helped me and I gave half of it to her. So being able to that was 2018. So being able to do that like that to me meant more than any deal. Even if I got a hundred thousand dollar deal, it wouldn't it wouldn't have made the impact that it made on me, you know, inside. And now it's like, you know, 2019. Like, 
gosh, I mean, the blessings that the man above has just poured is just, you know, amazing. I'm lost for words. But, uh, you know, moved into uh, 2018, I moved into a penthouse, three-bedroom penthouse uh, in downtown Phoenix. Uh, Twenty, You know, beginning of 2019, I bought a Bentley Bentayga. Um, to add on to the R8, I still have the Bentley. Things have just changed. And now 2020, I mean, January 7th, like we have so many projects coming out. Uh, so much stuff to give, so much stuff to give back. In 2019, we opened uh, our uh, Help a Friend Foundation, which is a nonprofit to help uh, to help like, our community, you know, and not limit it to just one thing, you know, to, but just to help continue to serve and help and inspire the world um, by one friend at a time. Help a friend. But things just blew up. I mean, 2018, 19, all in. Uh, entrepreneurs sprouted you know we we do live events now we do one-on-one -on -one mentorship we do we do a lot and it was never forced and things just happen on its own you know they took their own course and now 2020 i'm just excited i'm excited became a uh, 2018 became a uh, so-called millionaire <laughs> i don't want to blow it about that but things just are perfect things are perfect the journey that is my journey like Things are, are amazing, and I and I can't wait to share a lot of lessons and a lot of uh, tribulations and a lot of uh, business practices and real estate knowledge that I've learned over the last four years now um, with you guys. I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, I am financially free. I don't have to. I don't have to do videos. I don't have to. You know, I'm 23. First of all, I'm not going to stop. I'm not just going to go to Tahiti and end it all right right or retire but i'm here i'm here because i i want to i'm passionate about this uh 2020 i know my youtube channel has been uh, kind of like a hobby whenever i can or want uh, but now it's like all right let's let's recreate my success journey in you right let's recreate what i have to offer uh, or what i had to go through let you know uh, on the good side like let's do that for yourself right let's let's impact your life let's let's take you from zero dollars in the bank to one hundred twenty thousand in deals in in a year you know let's let's take you on your success journey right and that's what i'm excited about i'm excited to serve you guys uh that is my story uh, if you have any questions about my story um feel free to comment down below i was debating for a long time whether to do it or not um but i feel like my testimony can reach a lot of uh people um guys everything that i told you is absolutely true you can, um, I, don't, I don't know how you want me to prove it, but if you have to find a way, to, like it's it's all real. It's all real. You can go on my Instagram. You can look at where I came from. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, stuff that I'm going to be sharing throughout these next, you know, this next year on here. Uh, but everything is true. So if you have any doubts, concerns on whether real estate works, whether entrepreneurship works, whether you can do it, like I'm telling you, success does not discriminate. Like, I don't, I don't care if you live at a trailer park. I don't care if you live in your car right now. Obviously, I care, but I don't care for no excuses. That's what I'm trying to say. There is no excuse on why you can't get yourself out of that situation. Look, hardships and challenges are going to happen to every single one of us. But I'm here to, uh, as a testimony, to let you know that it doesn't matter the road that you're going through right now. You can overcome it. You know, God does not put you through a road that he knows that you won't overcome right if you're willing to right he's going to give you the, the 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 people and the timing and the resources to do it it's just going to be up to you right when i lost that five thousand dollar deal i didn't i didn't want to believe in god anymore because it literally it broke me but god's like hey hey son like wait a minute here like no forget about that five thousand here's thirteen thousand right and like you see, like now and looking back, it's like, OK, that's what happened to me. You know, if if I got a deal my first month, I wouldn't appreciate a real estate. But it took me nine months to get my first deal. And it made me appreciate every single deal. And I still appreciate every single deal. So if you're if you're trying to, you know, get your first client in a business or get your first real estate wholesale deal or get whatever your first whatever in any business, you know, just be patient because your time is up. And as long as you continue to uh, go throughout you know, the path and continue to improve every single day, I promise you, fast forward four years later, you can go from living at a trailer park to driving a Bentley owning a $2 million commercial building. And I just, I'm not, I don't, it's not a solo owner. Like obviously I have partners, but that alone is a huge win. Like nobody's going to come and evict us out of here. Like I 
Never, never. So that is an amazing feeling. I know the feeling of getting kicked out. I know the feeling of living or having to live at a friend's house. Uh, I never lived in my car. Uh, guys, whatever you're going through, just know that you can overcome it. Uh, whatever, if your back is against the wall, you know, just, you know, put your faith in God. Put your faith in the man above because he will provide the answers. And he did it for me, and I know he can do it for you. So, guys, that is my story. Uh, if you stayed this long, I appreciate you. I always, I was debating whether to do it or not, but I did it. So I hope, uh, I hope my story uh, reaches those uh, that it's meant to reach, even if it has a hundred views. I am totally okay with that because it was it reached who it was meant to reach, and to me that is that is all I need. I'm asleep, well knowing that. Uh, I hope my testimony inspires and motivates you, a lot of you. And now it's 2020. I'm 23, and I just. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping because every single day that I wake up is a blessing and I'm going to continue to be, be a blessing for, for the world. And um, 23, I can't wait to uh, see where I am in the next five years, next year, next five years, next 10, 20 years, as long as God uh, allows me to. And I can't wait to see your testimony and your story a year from now when you say, hey, like I was here and now I'm here. And then you being able to go on YouTube and, and share a video of of, uh, of your journey, you know, like I'm doing right now. So that is my journey up to this date. My journey has not ended. Yours hasn't either, right? Your journey has not ended at all. I don't. I, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now, right? Find God's love. Find what you want to do. Stay consistent. Take the action. Take the risk, and continue the journey. And you would you can only imagine where your journey will end up i never in a million years thought that i would ever be happy again or ever be loved again like the last few years has been amazing it's been it's been a complete blessing there's holidays now you know there's christmas there's thanksgiving now and and things just changed like uh, a few things i was able to do like for fat on the family side was i mean i took a 2018 september 2018 i took uh 13 14 people to hawaii my mom's sister's aunt uh some of uh, my, uh two of my cousins my brothers like i took 13 14 people to hawaii it cost me uh, a pretty penny i could have bought a condo with it let's just say that being able to do that stuff is what it's all about right like being able to take a life trip with your family your your kids your your grandparents your your parents uh i just like last weekend i went to disneyland took my sisters and mom and siblings to disneyland so being able to do that stuff is what it's all about right uh so find your why you know find your why find the reason why you want to keep continuing this journey and just know that everything and anything is possible okay so with that said guys um longer video uh, that is my life story up to January 7, 2020. And uh can't wait to update you guys and keep you guys uh, informed along my journey. A lot of exciting stuff is happening right now. And that is who I am up to this day. And uh, a year from now may be completely different, you know, and, uh, you know, for the better, of course. Um, but, guys, that is uh, Alex Signs' story up to 23 years old. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below on uh, anything. Maybe you relate to me. You know, I, I love to hear, you know, your story. Your, uh, you know, let, if you're going through a tough time, just, you know, let me know your situation. You know, I love to, you know, give you some advice or pointers. And just continue to follow along uh, throughout the channel. I'm going to provide everything that you need to know to make money in real estate. And I'm going to give you even more uh, knowledge and information that I've learned and uh continue to grow uh not just for me but you know grow together so thank you guys for watching this appreciate you like subscribe comment and i'll see you guys in the next video peace